What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we'll be doing a bit of a cleanup video on this Dyson DC07 all floors. Now this machine I just recently did a review on, so now we are prepared to clean this up in preparation of offering it for sale. So, I already washed the Cyclone out prior to my testing, so there's likely not going to be too much dust in it, so I'll likely just tap out the Cyclone and empty the bin. But what I will do is I will attempt to polish the bin, something I've never done before, although I'm not sure if I want to show that on camera, because it's probably going to look very cringe. So, one thing we'll be doing is cleaning off the body of the machine. Now, one thing that's a bit controversial with the way that I fix my vacuums is I don't generally, I don't, I try to work smarter and not harder. And there's some instances where it's not super necessary to disassemble the machine. And a lot of these Dysons that are clutch based are clean out underneath the base assembly whenever I change the clutch. So a lot of times that work doesn't necessarily need to be done again. And there really isn't much else that you really need to clean without actually being able to do it like this. So, as much as it may be controversial to not break this thing all the way down to the motor, I'm not going to because I don't find it to be necessary. If there's a problem with this changeover valve or anything like that, then I will. And I'll still wash a lot of the removable parts, but I won't do what's not necessary. So what I am going to do is, with this part fully assembled, and this is important, I'm going to spray the body of this down with Zep Industrial Purple Degreaser. This is really good stuff. It can burn you if you're not too careful, but if you get it on your hands, just wash your hands. Or if you're worried about it or you have sensitive skin, just put on some gloves. And this stuff works wonders. I've used it for over a year at this point, at least, if not longer. And it's been very, very solid and very effective. So, I just spray the machine down. A lot of dust will accumulate on this machine around these areas, and spraying this down will break down a lot of the dirt. I did some of this off camera, but some of these little cracks and crevices I'll still get into, but I'll still spray them down for now. And a lot of this stuff I'll actually end up washing separately. But the main body is what we're concerned about. And what I'll do is I'll let this, these chemicals sit here on the plastic for about a minute, and that will break down a lot of the debris. The nice thing about chemical cleaner like this is it does a lot of the hard work for you. And the reason why I do this with all this stuff still on is because obviously if I removed the filters or removed any of these filter holders, then potentially some of this liquid could get into the motor. And I'm obviously trying to avoid that. So doing this with the sink fully assembled means that it's not going to happen like that. So it's just kind of a half-assed way of doing it, but it still is perfectly effective. All right, it's been about a minute now. So one thing I'll do is I'll take some paper towels and wipe off the majority of the solution. Now, again, it can settle in some places. But at the end of the day, some of these pieces will be removed, so it's not a big deal if it sits on some of this stuff. And I'll get more thoroughly into the cracks and crevices later. But one thing you want to do is you don't want to leave the degreaser on. So I'll take a sponge after I've washed, well, after I've rinsed some water through it and wring it out so it's damp. And I'll just scrub down the rest of the outside of the machine. Any of the bits that I just hit with the degreaser because you want to get all of the excess chemicals off of the plastic. While we're here, we're also going to wipe down these gaskets and seals and make sure that these are in good shape. Make sure there's no debris on them and all that. And I'll get into these little cracks and crevices here to kind of take care of that. I'm going to remove, remove the attachments. We're actually going to wash these attachments and I'm going to get into these areas that the attachments clip into just with the sponge and just kind of scrub it out because some gunk can kind of form here and it can be a little gross. 
but and I'll get around the perimeter of the power button right over here and the back of this as well so now you can see there's still some debris on this section right here where the filters are so we're actually gonna take these off so this valve pipe right here we're gonna take this off and we're gonna wash it now we're going to take the pre-motor filter door and we're going to press this yellow catch and pop this right out just like that and we're actually going to wash both the filter door and the filter we're going to wash them both but we're going to make sure to quick dry the filter door As you can see there's a little bit of liquid that's settled in this so it's not the best idea to do it the way that I did it it's not a tutorial it's just showing how I did it so in case you're wondering So I'm going to wipe off this gasket right here where the actual filter intakes. Try to get some of the excess moisture. Yeah, it seems like it's the first time in a while that I've done a full refurb on a Dyson, so I'm kind of learning as I go, or relearning as I go, I should say. So sometimes half-assing it is not the best way to do it. So we're just cleaning off this gasket and also it's kind of hard to get into this little, into this little section right here but I try to clean this out too since dust can accumulate and I'll also wipe off the seal right here See, there is some some gunk right there that can kind of accumulate in this crack right here that can sometimes happen and I also like to wipe off this seal and I'll scrub this part right here. There's a bit of debris that likes to get stuck right in here. So I'll get that. See, that does help a little bit, just kind of getting right in those cracks and crevices. Trying to essentially detail the machine as best we can. And again, you could tear this machine apart and just wash it. And if you're trying to get into a little area like this, you could use a screwdriver to kind of guide it in, or ideally use a plastic pry tool, so that way you don't scratch up the machine. You can see, this button can sometimes get loose and break off on these. So it's a little loose on this model, but it still holds in just fine. So it shouldn't be a problem. So yeah. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to remove the HEPA filter and we're going to need a small flat tip screwdriver to do that. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to carefully pop off this HEPA filter casing. Now, there's a couple ways we could do it. We could do it either with a screwdriver or we could do it with a plastic pry tool. So, first I'm going to try it with a plastic pry tool to see if that's sufficient. And if that doesn't work, we'll use a flat tip screwdriver. Uh, fortunately, my might be a little bit. Hmm. So this particular flat Yeah, this might actually not be sufficient enough. So it looks like we will need to get a flat tip screwdriver. get this out Ugh. and we'll make sure to get the flatter end and we'll lock the torque on that Ooh. I really don't like doing this because it's really difficult to do this without This is my least favorite part of these old Dysons is trying to pop off it's trying to pop off this filter cover without damaging it. There's not really a good way to do this without breaking it. 
which I'm not a fan of. This is such a bad design. Come on, come on. Good. Hey, there we go. So the plastic pry tool wins again. So we've got that side, now we're gonna get this side. Hey, there we go. So plastic pry tool and sliding it is the key. See, there we go. So I almost, I almost convinced myself to not trust my gut, but no, my gut was the right way to go because so many, so many of these tutorials will show you using a metal screwdriver and you could tell I tried to do it my way at first, but I started to get hesitant because of the, you know, obviously I'm on camera now, but no, my gut instinct was correct. Use a plastic pry tool. You can get these with a lot of phone repair kits or you can buy them in kits by themselves. It doesn't have to be this small, but plastic is good because it's bendable just like the plastic right here it's not metal against plastic so not only are you not going to mar it but you're not putting such a harsh material on it that you risk cracking it as badly so we popped this off without any problems we actually marred it from the screwdriver and we didn't even successfully get it so here's our HEPA filter and here's the weird thing about these Dysons is that when I used this DC-07 I didn't have anything but fine dust get into the pre-motor filter and yet, pr presumably from the previous owner, we've actually got coarse debris and hair that got all the way through the motor and through the HEPA filter. So this is not the first time I've seen this, but it's really bizarre to me because why? Like, how, how does all this get past the cyclone and get past the previous filter? It doesn't make any sense to me. But I see this a lot when I get Dysons in, and I don't understand it because my usage has never led to this happening. So, I don't know. But nevertheless, as you can see, this is completely clogged with carbon dust and obviously, of course, debris, so we're going to replace this. We've got a brand new set of HEPA filters with gaskets and pre-motor filters as well. Obviously, only one set we're going to put in. The other set is for a different 7, which we'll be fixing later down the road. So that's very nice. So we've got that, and we have those filters set aside for whenever we're done. But in the meantime, we're going to wash both of the filter covers, since these can get quite grody. And we're also going to wash the attachments and both of the airway inspection ports, which the other one I haven't removed yet. That's the U-Bend. So we're going to wash this as well, even though it's often not necessary. And we're also going to replace the hose. All right, here we are in the sink. Well, not we're not in the sink. Okay, now we're in the sink. Well, here we are looking at the sink. So, we've got a bunch of parts right here. Um, these are all the ones that I mentioned that I'm going to wash, at least on this particular Dyson. Obviously, if you haven't cleaned your cycling your Dyson, you might need Again, this is not a tutorial. It's just a vlog. So, don't use this. Do as I say, not as I do. So, we do have our filter, which even though I am replacing the filter on this DC-07, I'm still going to wash this filter because this actually came out of a different DC-07 because the one that was in this was completely clapped out and I didn't want to replace it before testing it to review because I don't want to sell someone a vacuum with a brand new filter that has dust in it. So we're going to be washing this. And a little trick that I used with any filter is before you wash it, spray it with some degreaser. Helps dislodge some of the debris and whatnot. And so we're going to do it with that. And we're also going to do it with this pad. Now it was in this way, so this is the area that has all the dust on it. So we're going to spray this down as well. And we're just going to let that sit for approximately one minute. And once we do that, we will continue with washing this. All right, time to wash these.
Yeah, this is definitely the kind of thing where I'd say to replace this, which I am. I'm only keeping this as a test filter. So like if I get one that's missing a filter or the filter's really bad and I don't know what else is wrong with the machine, I can pop this in there and it's not going to restrict airflow, but it also is not a brand new filter that I'm ruining potentially if it's a bad machine. So it's so I always like keeping kind of iffy filters around for this reason. Because it's less wasteful than wasting a brand new filter that you wouldn't want to put in a refurbished machine. Since, you know, technically at that point has been used. And once the raw water starts running clear like this, it's good. And that's about all it needs. Kind of spin this around a bit, tap it out. Now this. So give it a good squeeze. Like it's a friend you haven't seen in many years. Give it a good squeeze. A nice friendly hug to squeeze out all the imperfections. Although, remember, just like in real life, we're not going to get out all the imperfections, and that's okay. So throw it away. Yeet. Wash that. Wash that. Wash that. Wash that. Wash that. Now this, I'm gonna make sure to dry out the inside of this first because that is metal in there and you don't want that to rust. I'm just giving this a good rinse. Should take care of that. And I am going to use my sponge to try to scrub off all these paint marks and scratches. While we're here, I am going to attempt to take off all these paint marks and scratches with my 91% isopropyl and the abrasive side of the, of the sponge. So I'll be kind of shifting back and forth between attempting to rub off these scratches with isopropyl and washing this part with soap and water. And now we're doing the same treatment to the rest of the pieces. Now it's worth noting that after you wash all of those small parts, if you have something like an air compressor, you can actually quick dry them very effectively. Ah, this tripod. And this particular machine definitely will need a lot of that quick drying. Although, the nice thing about these Dyson parts is that since they're all plastic, with the only exception of the ring inside of the pre-motor filter housing, a lot of this stuff can air dry if need be. But if you have a air compressor where you can use to blow all of the moisture out of each of these parts, you can potentially have every single one of these pieces washed in 10 minutes if you're quick enough and if you're efficient enough. So the nice thing about these is that a lot of those pieces come off really easily, can be cleaned very easily, and can be reinstalled fairly easily.